Hey everybody, how's it going out there in YouTube world? G-Man Live saying yo, 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 yo. I hope everybody's enjoying their weekend. All right, here we go. Week three, welcome to week three of the NFL season 2015. We're going to break it all down right here on G-Man Live. All right, so obviously everybody out in Eagle Land is a little upset, a little down, and some people are just downright depressed. Uh, because this guy, number seven, by the way, this is Mike Vick, but Bradford shares the same number. So, uh, hasn't been able to do what it is that we've hoped for him to be able to do. Now, against the Jets, you got a whole different situation going on. All right. Now, against the Jets, the problem with the, with the situation that we have with the Cowboys is, like I was saying in my previous videos, by the way, I want to just thank everybody for checking out the videos. I liked some of the comments. That was really nice. Thank you. Much uh, much appreciated. You got to be able to run the football in this offense, in Chip Kelly's offense. You have to be able to run the football. Now, prior to the season starting, that was my biggest concern, that you don't have an offensive line because you let your two guys go. So until they begin different schemes or new personnel, which I don't know where you're going to get in the middle of the season, it, it, it could be a little bit of a rough going. The Jets have three stud uh, defensive tackles. And they can get upfield, and they can get a push into the backfield. So I'm not trying to make everybody be upset out there in Eagle Land, uh, but this one is this one's going to be tough. The Jets' defense is much better than the Cowboys' defense. All right, I'm not saying the Jets are like the Patriots here, and you know some of the other top teams, but they are not. A, this is a this is going to be one of those those teams that at the end of the season people are going to say, you know, they had a hell of a season that we didn't see this coming. They're good. They've been drafting well. Um, a lot of teams, I mean, the, look, when the Cowboys put together their offensive line, everyone thought that Jerry Jones and all those guys were a bunch of bozos and morons. Slowly, quietly, they built themselves one hell of an offensive line. All right. Zach Martin goes in the first round. All right. Great guard. That dude is going to be there for years and he's going to be, he's going to be killing it. All right. They got a great, uh, the kid from Wisconsin, Fre uh, Fredericks at center is he's versatile. I mean, he can, he can, he anchors that line beautifully. Uh, obviously they have, um, uh, Tyron, uh, Smith, you know, the, the kid from the Pac-12 on the tackle. Uh, they, they made another great move by picking up Lael Collins, uh, that the Eagles could have gotten, but you know, Hey, you, you want to play stupid <laughs> when you're stuck on stupid, this is what happens. So the Cowboys quietly built themselves a great offensive line. The Jets have quietly built themselves a nice defensive line. Ryan Fitzpatrick is a good quarterback. Everybody likes to dog the guy because he went to Harvard. That doesn't mean shit. The guy can play, all right? He actually has a better winning percentage than the guy that we're paying $100 billion for, whatever. And we, we were going to offer him a contract extension. Bradford's ability right now to run the offense is not as good as Ryan Fitzpatrick. So quarterback by quarterback, right now Ryan Fitzpatrick is actually a better quarterback. And the dude that punched Geno Smith in the face... Should be like, I mean, the Jets should give that dude like forty million dollars because they just he he saved their ass. Geno Smith, quarterback in the Jets right now, they're zero and two. Ryan Fitzpatrick, quarterback in the Jets right now, they're two and zero. Oh. There's a reason for that. Ryan Fitzpatrick knows how to run the offense. Now I'm not saying that Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be able to get that team, you know, deep into the playoffs. I'm not saying that, but to knock off the Cleveland Browns in Week One to just manage the game against a really overrated Colts team. He was able to do, win it, make great throws downfield. He was able to do, he got him 2-0. and Now he goes back home. Eagles are coming up to the, you know, to MetLife. You know, we're coming up to Giants Stadium. Let's break down offense. Let's, let's break it down uh, offense first. So on our offense, if we don't run the football, uh, I don't have any confidence at all because we're going to get into the same pattern again where Bradford steps back, throws the ball between 35 and 50 times. Uh, this could be that game too, by the way, where Bradford gets hurt um, because, uh, look, the kid from USC, Williams, can ball. Uh, Wilkerson, from the kid from Temple, can ball. These are guys that can ball, all right? If you can't block them. They will throw Kelsey and Barbre and Gardner and all these other losers, they will throw them five uh, yards behind the line of scrimmage and crush 
Bradford. And Bradford's not going to be able to get out and run away from these guys. These guys are big. They're fast. They can move. They're quick. They're good against the pass. They're good against the run. This is a good, good, really, really impressive Jets defense that also is good in the, uh, in the secondary. I mean, they can, this team can ball. Now, they have some injuries that, that could potentially slow them down a little bit. Uh, Cromartie has, I think, a knee, and uh, Rivas has a, a groin. All right, you know, that, that could potentially help the Eagles. Problem is this. I don't know if I can say for sure that if we can't run the ball, can we throw the ball downfield? We haven't been able to do it all season first couple games. I don't exactly know what gives us any confidence that we can do it now. Our receivers don't get open. They don't separate. They don't really have much in the way of speed threats down the field. By the way, we did, and we cut them. Um, that was Deshaun Jackson, by the way, anybody who missed that. Uh, we had another guy who used to be able to get down the field, and we let him go. And now he's wearing uh, red out in KC, being coached by the guy who drafted him in 09, Andy Reid. Uh, so, you know, look, you don't really have much as far as like a vertical downfield threat. And in order to win in the NFL nowadays, you have to just possess that possibility so that the defense thinks to themselves, shit, we got to cover that downfield threat. It's got to be in the defensive coordinator's mind. When you play the Eagles nowadays, it's not in their mind anymore. They don't worry about that. They can play, they can do what they call a zero blitz. That means they bring everybody up to the line, man on man on, on the, on the sides, so they're covering the wideouts man on man, which you can do against the Eagles because we don't have great receivers, and you just go after uh, you know all out rush, whether it's a run blitz or it's a you know you're blitzing Bradford. The thing is, is that the Jets, this Jets team, doesn't necessarily have to do that. The Cowboys didn't have to do it, and the Falcons initially were bringing all that pressure, then realized they could actually get to the quarterback by bringing just four, maybe five. The Cowboys were getting to the to Bradford by bringing four, sometimes five. Uh, sometimes they would blitz and they would get there with more. This Jets team can get there with their down line. That's scary because then they can just sit back there and pick them off. And Bradford, I think, has the most interceptions so far um, of any quarterback in the NFC. Pi maybe, I think, in the NFL, but no, definitely in the NFC. So, offensively, <laughs> I mean, it's rough. We were negative 2.5 favorites, and now we're now down to two uh, and a half, um, you know, two and a half dogs. I didn't expect us to be, I didn't expect the Jets to be a home dog. All right, and they shouldn't be either because a 2-0 and team should not be a home dog against an 0-2 team. That's just stupidity, all right? So props to the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets crap. So Eagles are actually about 8-0, 9-0 against the Jets uh, lifetime in the, in the regular season. Uh, I'm going to just say, look, I think that comes to an end here. Um, I'm not, you know, look, I love the Eagles. All right, you guys know I got my trusty blanket over here. Always wearing the green hat. You know, I'm in, but, you know, hey, it when it don't look good, it don't look good. And that's how things go on offense. You're going to run DeMarco Murray, who's injured, has, you know, has a hammy. So Ryan uh, Matthews is, is a similar sort of runner. But either way, these guys are not going to be able to run if they can't get past the, you know, if they can't open up lanes. In order to do that, the Eagles have to have pulling guards. I said this in my last one. You have to have pulling guards. Guys that can get out around the center and then upfield fast. All right. If you're coming from the left side. If you're coming from the right side, you got to get around the center and you got to pull left. So if or the center is going to pull and then the guard is going to follow. Either way, what happens is the flow of the offensive line goes in one direction, running back runs behind them. That is what the Eagles have not been able to do. But when they had Mathis and when they had Harriman, they were able to do that. Now you can't do it. Now you can't run. Once you shut down that run game, Eagles offense looks really bad. By the way, not all offensive line is the problem here. I'm going to just break it down real easy. Sam Bradford does not make great plays. Uh, and he doesn't make great uh, throws. And he also doesn't make really good decisions. And, and you got to be able to have that decision-making ability. The minute you start thinking... It's too late. It's got to be instinctual, all right. Uh, you know, it's got to be instinctive right from the, you know, from the from the jump. As soon as he snaps it, he's got to know exactly where the play is going. He's got to trust his receivers to make those breaks. Now, I don't know exactly what it is that he's doing. Uh, if he doesn't trust them or they're not making their breaks, but one of the two are happening. So that's offense. When we switch to the defensive side, all right, we got, you know, we got our secondary. 
which they're going to be tested a little bit this week because you got Brandon Marshall and they're going to put, you know, good or bad Max on him. Who knows? I, if Maxwell plays press coverage, it seems like he gets beat. Maxwell plays uh, a look off the line, Maxwell gets beat. So which is good Max and which is bad Max? I don't know. I don't know which one's good Max and bad Max. Uh, but I think Brandon Marshall is going to have a hell of a day. If he's 100% healthy, he's going to have a good day. If Decker plays, he's going to have a good day. Eagles will will get some pressure uh, with their down linemen. But remember, Cedric Thornton is not going to play in this game. So you're going to have Taylor Hart. Uh, and if he can't go, I mean, you're down, now you're at your third guy. So uh, Vinny Curry is essentially going to be that guy that's going to be out there, which now means that your, your, uh, your guys on the line are – are your off your your uh, linebackers are going to be thin, uh, and your linebackers are already thin because you're missing Kendricks, you're missing Alonzo, and you're not going to bring in D'Amico, and you're going to bring in Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks involved, by the way. Uh, so no arguments there. I'm not worried too much about the loss of of uh, Jordan Hicks. What worries me is that you are not going to be able to prevent them enough. In other words, they're going to get their points. They're not going to score a ton of points. But they're going to get their points, and their defense is going to be enough to keep the Eagles down. And I think that's where this game is won and lost, really, is that the Eagles will just be what the Eagles were for the previous two weeks and not score enough points to be able to to overcome whatever the Jets get. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick ain't going to throw for four touchdowns. But he's not. he doesn't make stupid mistakes. He's beaten the Eagles before. Um, but I think that was with Andy Reid. I think that was like back in 2011, 2012. Um, but the guy's been around, you know, it's not like Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't know how to, you know, uh, direct an offense in the NFL. He does. And so unfortunately, uh, look, you're on the road. You haven't had any success running the football. You got skittish quarterback. All right. Who, uh, doesn't really have any receivers getting open, making separation. You got an offensive line. That's not opening up holes. This all kind of, I mean, you got a defense that's, that's a little banged up in the linebacker spot. Your secondary is a little suspect. I look, every everywhere you cut it, it's a Jets win. Um, you know, I mean, this is like one of those like 17 to like, you know, 9 or 16 to 10 type games. But that's, I think, how it can be. It's not going to be out of control. It's not like we're going to never have a shot to win it. It's just that we're not going to get that win. So uh, so that's how, you know, that's that's the view. You know, that's the view from G-Man Live, uh, looking out, seeing what I see. I hate to say it, um, I think that's how this goes. You know, it's not what I want, but uh, I got to keep it real here, you know, and as much as I love my Eagles, and I do love them, you know, I think that's how it goes. I think, unfortunately, I think that's uh, that's what's going to happen this Sunday. I don't know what's going to happen next Sunday, but when you're 0-3, you got to win a lot of ball games to get back to to you know, being a contender, and it's going to be tough. This division sucks. The only thing that's helping Eagles out is the division sucks, all right? If you're 0-3, you only have to worry about the Cowboys, who I'm going to predict are going to lose to the Falcons this week at home to a team that, I mean, the Falcons are now 2-0, and and they beat the Eagles, and they beat the Giants. So that's, you know, not bad. Now they're going to play Dallas. They're going to beat them. They're going to beat all, they're going to be three of the four NFC East teams all in a three-week span. And let's face it, we were this close to beating them. Because if Parkey makes that field goal, Eagles are one and one. So, uh, in any event, that's going to wrap it up here. I'm going to keep this one short. That's going to wrap it up in G-Man Live. Let me just say to everybody out there that, that keeps in touch with me, watching my videos, much appreciated. Um, when the season starts, I'm going to be reviewing television shows, uh, Homeland, uh, The Leftovers Season 2, and The Affair Season 2. I'll be reviewing them. And then also, uh, I'll give you guys some movie reviews uh, Monday. I'm going to check out a bunch, and then I'll be back, and I'll probably give you guys some videos uh, Tuesday and Wednesday and let you know about the movies coming up. I have some good movies coming out this fall. Uh, Black Mass, I'll probably see. Uh, there's a couple other ones that are coming out. I think uh, Everest, and then I'll get a chance to review them, give you some updates on those movies, and we'll be able to talk that. You know, we got to be able to keep it light here because it's going to be a rough season. So... Uh, but I, I'm still sticking to what I said last uh, video. You know, I don't get, there's no, those bozos on Breakfast on Broad, which could be the dumbest show ever made, uh, they, they're just they're just piping up guys. Um, and, and on the other ones, on CSN Philly, those guys, they're, they're all just blowhards that just have to sit there and say whatever they have to say in order to just collect their checks. Uh, and they have to pump guys up. To make it look good because they're, you know, they have to be able to write their story. So I'm going to give it to you straight. All right. 
Uh, the mighty Iraq is going to give it to you straight. Philadelphia is going to give it to you straight. And eat that pussy going to give it to you straight. I mean, those are guys, these are all Eagle fans. One of them lives out on the West Coast, flies all the way to Philly to, to, to check out Eagles games. That's dedication, not because it's your job. So all those bozos on CSN Philly and all those idiots doing breakfast on broad, you get big, fat, gas face. This is what you get, all right? That means you're number one. So, uh, you know, you want to check out what's going on with this Eagles team. You get it here. You get it at those other uh, sites. They will give you the honest scoop. Uh, there is also a, uh, a YouTube channel, the Fifth Round Movement. Uh, they're they like they're big fans of the Jets, but you know what? They're also objective. They'll they'll break it down objectively. So anyway, so that's how it is from uh, that's how I see it from here. And uh, you know, like I said, come back check out my movie reviews, television reviews as well. We're gonna be doing them uh, starting uh, next week, and the following week will be TV. And then after that, there'll be a segment where any issue you guys want to talk about as far as any sort of uh, medical issue, any kind of physical problem, you want to bring them up, put them in the comments below. And I will be happy to discuss that. And anything, we can break it down. Uh, anything, I want. my first video I was discussing uh, about the thyroid. Uh, and some of these things are kind of important. Just to get away you know, from the sports world. Because here in Philly, we take that stuff real seriously. So, until then, everybody enjoy the game on Sunday. Have fun with it. Things don't go our way. Hey, you know what? Football season still is a lot of fun. Enjoy college football on Saturday. Go Birds on Sunday. Adios from G-Man Live. Peace. Have a great weekend.